There's a lot of people in Counter-Strike who have shared this same dream, the dream that Counter-Strike would eventually be in arenas and stadiums, and seeing some of the old players from those generations kind of notice that that dream has to an extent been realized and has taken the next step, it's really cool. My name is Jason O'Toole. I'm known as Moses. I'm a commentator and a former professional Counter-Strike player. Yeah, Counter-Strike 20 years ago was, uh, was a little bit of a wilder place than, than it currently is now. There wasn't as much professionalism and, and money and there wasn't all the cameras. But um, especially over in North America, there was a real sense of pride in representing West Coast Counter-Strike or East Coast Counter-Strike and how those things would play out. The lands back then were so much different. I think my first, uh, my first land, there's no crowd, there's no audience. Just a room, a storage room in the back of a Circuit City with 10 PCs set up. I don't even think Circuit City exists anymore. I was very lucky to be teammates with my brother. And some of my favorite memories that Counter-Strike has given me over the years is those years and summers in 2003, 2004, just hopping in the car with my brother and driving six hours together, just blasting Lincoln Park and just kind of talking about Counter-Strike for hours on end. Because we didn't have social media, there was no subreddit that you could go to for the community. We, we had our own ways of kind of keeping things tight-knit. Um, but I mean, back then we didn't even really have pictures of each other. Like, you, could, like you, would, you would go to lands without even knowing what your teammates looked like. You would just kind of show up and be like, oh, you're this guy. You're this guy that I've been playing with for the past year. So it was, it was fun and it was weird like meeting all those people and, and forming those friendships. The Counter-Strike community is, is, is a lot of fun if you find the right crowd to be involved in and find the right people to play and compete with. I still get messages from players that I competed with and against back then and just mention how far it's come and just mention that it's awesome having one of those old school voices still on the broadcast and still involved in Counter-Strike. I made the decision to stop pursuing professional Counter-Strike as a player, I think back in like 20, 2014. And I don't think it, it wasn't really a conscious decision. I just picked casting back up as a way to stay connected to the scene and stay connected to the friends that I had within the community in North America and to do something fun with the game I loved. I was one of the first people who had professional playing experience to step into broadcast work. And I felt like I had a voice at that time that no one else could provide to give insight into the thought process of being a player. And the romantic story of how tactics change and across a single map and the decisions that teams and players are making that, and how they adapt across, across a half of Counter-Strike. I felt like that was something that I could help provide in, in the commentary booth that, that no one else was doing quite yet. And just across the next year after, after making that decision, just things fell into my lap that allowed me to give Counter-Strike more and more attention and more and more love and then a full-time contract comes to be a commentator. So it was just a sequence of things that just kind of allowed it to keep blowing up and I never looked back. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle of, of living out of a hotel. This is where the community comes in, like the, the generosity of the Counter-Strike community of being able to accommodate us on all the different travels. I think everyone's got a story of where some company or some team or some player has helped them out of a bind or a tight spot while they're on the road. That support is, is, is great and it fills you with a little sense of responsibility to keep working hard and keep pushing at it and even when things are frustrating and stressful, the amount of people that will reach out and, and still kind of talk about, you know, the fact that, that that's the dream being fulfilled is, it's wonderful. The honor broadcast talent in Counter-Strike is, uh, we have a crazy group of guys. We've had so many, so many memories and so, I mean, we were on basically like a, a band road tour for, for six, seven years. So you really put in the trenches and put in situations where you're just kind of relying and flying by the seat of your pants with the guys next to you. The nice thing is too, like, we have the kind of the old school group that was on that road tour, but now kind of coming out of coming out of the online era and coming out of COVID, you know, we've had the rise of young broadcast talent, like guys like Scrawny and Launders, uh, someone like Freya, who's been incredible. They're all wonderful. The growth of Counter-Strike has always felt like a little bit of like a relay race, right? Like you take the baton as far as you can and then it gets passed off to the next guy. And you realize if you look back far enough how much of a history this game has, and how every generation has had to build on the previous one and take that next little bit of a step forward. The goal has always been to represent Counter-Strike in the best light possible. We're very lucky that we have a group of Counter-Strike broadcast talent that love the game. This game's only gonna keep growing and getting bigger, so I feel excited and honored and privileged to be on the broadcast for it while also acknowledging that job's not done. We got plenty more in the future and, and, and that's all you can really ask for at the end of the day.